lots of easter eggs for from the bible and that's a good one um welcome to the bible in one year podcast brought to you by two brits and a bible if you like the idea of engaging in a casual but meaningful chat with a couple of buddies stay tuned in this is going to be for you Today's day 89, covering 1 Samuel 13 and 14. If you want a brief overview of these chapters, they're in the description. Well, you have a lot to get through today. No accent, no time for accents. I was trying to weigh out whether to do one, but I didn't have one ready to go, so I didn't want to... Yeah, That's totally fine, man. Well, you know, accents are your thing, numbers are mine. So let's just dive straight into that. Uh, Samuel said to Saul, you've done foolishly. You've not kept your command, the command of the Lord, your God. And I would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. I found it really interesting that that's verse 13, 13, because to me, the number 13 is sort of a cursed number to some extent, like not to a crazy extent, yeah. but still. So the fact it's 13, 13, I saw your face even like, oh, well, I so many times I've done. I think I had written down like 13, 13, 14, 14, like so many times that that's happened in like probably the next few days. And it's just been weird. So interesting that you put it out as well. I'm rubbing off on you, I think, because I'm a weird with the numbers. Obviously, the number seven being one of my favorites. And I think there's the number 40 might be in today. No, number 40 is tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Well, seeing as you've mentioned number 7, uh, 1 Samuel 13, verse 7. This is this whole thing which I've mentioned. Oh, I'm just going to drop my little ball while well, it's gone now. Um, that this whole thing about obedience is greater than sacrifice. And it goes on to mention it uh, like word for word. But it's this whole thing where Samuel tells Saul, I will be there in seven days. Wait before you make these sacrifices and basically on the seventh day it says 1 samuel 13 7 um hebrew so saul remained at gilgal all the troops with him were quaking with fear he waited for seven days but the time for Sam to come didn't come down so he said bring me the burnt offering and he did it and effectively what i took out of it this time is it's all the troops with him were quaking with fear so he made the sacrifice he actually cared more about his troops he was focusing on them the whole running to your mountain with the size of your god or the other way around he was mm. focusing on his troops not on his god and so he ended up basically ballsing everything up at the word go uh, yes and so yeah again like you said then out the back of that the kingdom will not endure there are consequences to the actions we don't always know the timing because his kingdom then grew hugely Right. that it will not endure so we don't know the timings on that but that's sort of what that ends up looking like a lot of this ties into stuff from tomorrow as well where Saul literally admits or it might be tomorrow or the next day but just admits you know i was worried about my men more than i was worried about you yeah so something i definitely commented on in the future yeah. the obedience over sacrifice thing as well obviously you wrote that in my bible so that will come up in coming days so that's quite exciting. another steep ah. classic and it's just so crazy to think that this is, uh, you know, they go into battle without any swords or spears or anything and they still win. So it's like, why are you worried about your men? Like you're serving the living God who's going to bring your enemies to you yeah. with no weapons, basically. Yeah. And and so what are you doing? And But on, on a side note, I really want, so obviously we just talked off off recording about The Chosen a little bit. I really want the chosen to just visualize one of these old Testament battles. Cause imagine how bizarre it is. We're so used to swords and shields and all that. Yeah. It's just blokes like running and these other guys with swords being like, well, oh, like, in it. his clay jar. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's amazing. Seriously. It's absolutely amazing. Um, although of course, by this stage, that was when they were under the judges because they, were, they didn't need that stuff under the judges. When they switched over to right. kings, the idea was they would have to be fighting the battles far more so. So they had right. to have that. It was their choice to fight under a king. Although what I found quite interesting is it then later on in 14, verse 20 Saul and his men assembled and went to battle they found the Philistines in total confusion striking each other with their swords so even though they are now equipped for battle God is still mm -hmm. the one that's in there fighting 
Um, yeah. Because we know that, where was it? Oh, pricey to get your sword sharpened is what I wrote down. I can't remember the exact reference of it, but basically they couldn't find any blacksmiths because they didn't need them previously. So now they have like weapons to actually have them maintained is stupid expensive because yeah, don't have it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have some stuff to say, but it's more Samuel 14. If you want to continue with anything else in 13 or no, all good. All right. Fair enough. Well then I'll, I'll go to 14. So um, obviously Saul then makes this pretty stupid oath of not eating and so on. And he makes his men and mm -hmm. everyone else do the same. And it gets to a stage where they can't wait anymore. So they end up sinning badly by ending up eating non-kosher animals, right? Including the blood and everything. Yeah. So this is starting to show that Saul's leadership is, is both inexperienced and also maybe it foreshadows and forebodes that it's going to slip. There's your English term for the day, foreboding. Um, and then he makes even more issues, right? Because Jonathan has like a little touch of honey uh, like a tiny bit and he sort of threatens to kill his own son for doing that and breaking the oath yeah and then you know, the israelites are annoyed they're like well hang on a minute you've starved us and we can't take any more so we've had non-kosher animals and now you want to kill your son no far from it we're not going to allow this to happen he's a good godly man so again you can see he doesn't fully have the respect of his his people yeah. right and again they're just he's swaying to what people want him to do not what he's called to do stick into an oath However, the interesting thing is this was an oath made to a human, not an oath made to God. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So it's a, that's why I said it was a stupid oath. It's not a, yeah. like, you know, it's not like a Nazarene oath of not cutting your hair yeah. and whatever. Yeah, true. And looking true. glorious with locks flowing down. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. as you say, a man-made oath for a man. I tried to grow my hair long once and it didn't work. My hair's so thick, it doesn't grow down. It just grows like out. It just looks hideous. So remember that, I was in year four. It's like an afro but like a really bad oh, yeah one. it was terrible bowl cut to the extreme okay i we need to add pictures of that <laughs> i think um so. so something which i found super interesting again i'd never noticed this before it's why i love doing this again it's saying here in 1 samuel 14 verse 35 then saul built an altar to the lord it was the first time he'd done this this is the first time he's built an altar to the Lord. I don't know. And I tried to look it up how long he's been king for, but Jonathan must have been old enough to be fighting at this stage. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm assuming, well, it says Saul was 30 when he became king. So at least a handful of years must have passed. If you know yeah. the details on that, please let me know. But how has it taken him this long to build an altar to the Lord after everything that he's been through, the prophecies, the power of God coming on him, everything like that? Not once has he built an altar to the Lord. Friggin' job. That is mental, isn't it? Yeah. That's, I love, I, I call them almost Easter eggs within the Bible. There's an unlimited amount of Easter eggs in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, if you're not familiar with the term, it's when a director in a movie has put like something small in for people who've seen the movie before to pick out. So, uh, yeah, lots of Easter eggs for from the Bible. And that's a good one. Um, well, you can see my side. I've got nothing left. So feel free to add more, mate. Disappointing. All right. Um, again, then in 1 Samuel 14 um i like the fact that in 40 and 41 do what seems best to you then Saul replied to the lord the god of israel why have you not answered your servant uh jonathan responded with the urim and the thummim now this was it jumped out to me because we'd mentioned this way back when the urim were the two flattish stones placed on the ephod and the breastplate that were cast to just sort of decide the lot of god and it was just cool again seeing how previous text in the old testament was related up to here um yeah. And then the final thing that I wanted to say actually was in and around uh, Jonathan and it was, is that in tomorrow? Have I made a big old mistake? Don't think I have. Um, did I? Might just have to filibuster my way through here for another 30 seconds. Um, what, about the, what about that bit? Like the second, um, interesting. Yeah, I kind of mentioned that already. All right. Um, cool. God loves you. Uh, yeah. You found out who was listening in Taiwan. So that was fun. Thanks very much for those listening in Taiwan. And yeah. you know what? Just share this with someone. Why not? 
reach out, yeah. reach out your comfort zone, share this with someone. Tomorrow's readings, and we th- we are so thankful for anyone who does watch and download and stuff. Tomorrow's readings, 1 Samuel 15, 16, and 17. So you beautiful little people, pick up your Bible, start reading it. There's a lot in there. And since part of your filibuster was my line, I'll just say, please consider joining us on social media at Two Bits and Bible. Cheers. 